French talk on the phone. And Rachel on the steps. No one ain't. You with me right now. Yes, I am. Oh my gosh. Sorry, Liz. Me and Mark. Um, Picking up the pieces. Yeah, it's not really like a problem. How are we going to follow on the steps? Uh huh. Oh, you're walking down the hallway. Okay, that's still walking down the hallway because you won't be on my video. It's okay. No problem. You won't work. I'll go with you. Hang on. Okay. This is Tiffany walking down the hall. Probably coming home from work. Hi, Tiff. After work. What are no? you doing? I'm videotaping. Um, for like, so I have. Come on. Yo. Dave. Wait, wait. Oh, okay, now you're on. Hey. This is Dave. Uh, I'm Dave. How's it going? This is Mike. This is Dave and Mike's room. Well, no. Dave and Matt Carlos Thomas. and Matt's room. La la. We're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotta go. Right. <laughs> Hold on. It's fading out. It's fading out. Oh, we're fading? Hold on. Okay, now it's well, Jeff. This is Jeff. He is sleeping. Well, he was sleeping no, until me and Rachel came in. Hey, Jeff. And this, is this is Bill. <laughs> sleeping. I wish I had, like, chickens for a dollar, dude. I'm broke as a Jeff joke. Uh, hey. hey! Hold on, it's fading out. Jeff's daughter! Hey, yeah. Bill. Hold on, don't smile yet. Oh, no! Now smile. What is this for? Just for me, so okay. I know. So wait, this is Jen. The other Jen. And Sadie. Hello. I saw you guys in town today, Sadie. Did you? Yeah, yeah I, I did. I saw you too. I was. Oh. What's up? <laughs> Star. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> wow. What? What a section, guys. <laughs> Ask some questions. Yeah. Um, Jenny, what's your favorite ice cream? Ice cream flavor. Um, oh come on, you can do better than that. I would have to say <coughs> chocolate chip cookie dough, Rocky Road, and mint chocolate chip. Interesting. Ooh. Okay, wait. Can I film house? Oh, how's the steer? Wait, no, it's not. There you go. Oh, Hi, it's still so fading in and out. Good, good. This doing, is over I'm, here. I'm doing fantabulistic. This is Jen Young. Hey, Tim. Okay, oh, I'm fading out, I'm fading out, I'm fading out. This is my us. Tim. Okay, this is Tim. Hi, Hi Tim. What's, What's up? up? How are you? I'm fine. Good. What have you been doing tonight? Uh, I went to see X Men again. Was it good? It was excellent. Excellent. Was I'm thrilling. so glad. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna hold on. I'm panning. Okay. So that's house in the in the light, and this is Jen and Jenny again. This is Jen, my soul sister. Bye guys. Oh, Bye Tim. Yeah. yeah. See you, Tim. We work in the pantry yeah. together. Okay. This isn't the Jen and Jenny show. And oh, Jenny shoved me into a trash can today. <laughs> As it helped me out, she went and ran and got a camera. Fading, fading. Okay, go. Go. I'm house. This is this is my deep thought for today. Yes, this is house. The deep thought is the house of the righteous contains great treasure, but the income of the wicked brings them trouble. Proverbs 15:6. Now for our news. New Testament reading, <laughs> well, okay. 1 15. Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jenny and Jen included, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe on him and receive eternal life. Okay. So praise God! You're dull. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. <laughs> this is a set in Phoebe. Hi. Hi. Oh, hello there. <laughs> okay, that's all. Okay, that's cool. That was pretty short, huh? Oh, yeah, that's Bye! Good. That's enough. Oh, so you can remember me with like a little thing around Exactly. Right Smile. Oh. Say something. <laughs> Say something creative. Say something creative? Yes. I'm really tired. <laughs> Are you doing your laundry? Yes. Okay. I'm washing my laundry. Sweet. Who is I this? just got back from Maine. From Maine? Maine is exciting. Yes. Wow. Hi, Lobsters Jenny. Jenny, wait, turn around, smile. 
This is Jenny. <laughs> Why are, okay, hold on. Look it up. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Smile. This is Danielle and Ruthie. We know Danielle. Is that Tommy? I normally No, that's Jeremy. Jeremy, wave and smile. Who else is it? I don't know. Okay. Danielle, what have you been doing today? My parents, they just hung out, went to Fort Collins. Nice. And then we went to, we played softball. Sweet. Okay. I'm turning this off on then. We played paintball? Softball. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, this is Sarah. I think she's calling her parents. So, yep, she's calling her parents. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to show you. Yes, got it. <laughs> I love it when I get it. Or do something. I'm gonna suck on tape. This is Lucas, and he's My doing no sex. <laughs> Thinks he's all cool and stuff. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my Okay, okay. Ow. Okay, now go. Hello. Okay, speak. This Hi. is Jason, is Sarah, and Danielle. I'm from Ohio. Hello. It's from Ohio, too. What did you guys do tonight? We went, we went bowling. We went bowling. Nice. We were doing high ropes all day. Sweet. And, uh, Sounds a good time. <gasps> nice card, Danielle. Look at this card. Oh, sicko. Okay, they're okay. ready. Ready? Here, look at this picture. Okay, okay. <laughs> look at that. Oh, oh. Oh, that's nice. This is what we do. These are, these are my, my friends from school. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Isn't that great? That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. Morgan's awesome. Nice. Mm. Okay. Photoshop. Fading out. Fading out. Okay. Fading out. Just be on the camera. I don't want to be on the camera. Too bad. Because you kind of are. This is John and Shalom. Hi. What's up, guys? Bad I'm just, okay. Bad. Last 15 minutes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Hey, guys. Hey, what's up? You better let me work a Hi. You know I'm doing great. How could I not be doing great hanging out with all you fabulous people? This is magic. Smile magic. Okay, I'm almost done. You're not even on camera. <laughs> Can't not focus. Okay, there you go. This is this is Ryan. I am Ryan. Fine, Ryan. Fine, Ryan. Oh, are you saying this to? I'm sending it to my house, actually. Your house? To my house. later. What? One? Yeah, probably when I wake up and get hungry. Hey, wait a minute here. Wait a minute. I don't know. It's black. Is the lens kind of? No. This lens is like gold. Oh, there we are. What? There we're going. Now you feel bad? Say hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. And who else is in your family? My dad. Hi. And my sister. And their names. Mike and Emily. Say hi, Mike and Emily. Hi, Mike and Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Chest. Chest. Jak się masz? Jak się masz? Dobrze. Dobrze. Bardzo dobrze. Ja też. Zajebiście. Suka. Co Okay. Say goodbye. Bye. That was fun. Five strangers pick to live in a house and have their lives taped. Find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. Um, yeah, obsessive compulsive. It's Why do I let her bother me and cause such anxiety? She smiles because everyone is watching. She cries because everyone is watching. She dances and sings and parades around because everyone is watching. Is that good or should I do it again? I don't know why everybody thinks I'm so dumb. Because I smoke pot. 
I pulled straight A's in biology at Yale. Just I like to have fun doesn't mean that I'm stupid. I was raised with my religion. I mean, that's the only religion I know. I don't know. We're Christians, so we don't know if we're technically Protestants or not. Um, I don't know. But I have doubts, too. I have doubts all the time, and I've always wondered what it's like to smoke weed. What you should. And the two actually kind of tie together because when you obsess about your anxiety, because if you're obsessing about something, it means you're probably worrying about it a lot more, and that's bringing your anxiety up. Okay. So both of them are kind of in the same family. I'm going to start to take a photo of um, okay. Do you, like, um, can you trace either one of your disorders back to a specific um, event in your life? Yeah, um, when I developed, like, panic disorder, which is in the anxiety family, mm -hmm. um, it's, that's where, like, phobias come from, you know. Um, I would, like, me and my friends were playing when I was eight, and uh, I thought it'd be funny to get in the trunk of a car, you know, and, and just close it, because I thought they'd let me out, since I wanted them to. Uh, but, you know, being little kids, they didn't, and, you know, they acted like they walked away and stuff, and I just started getting really scared when I was in the trunk, just pounding on it, you know, mm -hmm. telling them, screaming for them to let me out, and uh, by the time they did, which was probably only a couple minutes, like, the damage was already done, I was, like, you know, really scared of closed spaces after that, so I started developing a fear of things like elevators and subways and anything where I felt enclosed or okay. anywhere that I might be trapped, okay. so and that's kind of what developed my claustrophobia. Okay. Um, and then, like, what kind of steps have you taken to overcome these disorders? Well, I went to a clinic this summer in Pittsburgh where they uh, do something called, like, uh, what's it called? It's like gr aggressive behavioral therapy, mm -hmm. where they actually take you and introduce you to your fear, and they help you to just kind of gradually work up to it. Like, they would take you to an elevator, have you push the button, watch the doors open, then close again. Next step would be to actually step on the elevator and then step back off, or you know, then eventually get me out to where I can go a floor, then two floors, and eventually, you know, you just ride it enough to your, where you're confident with it, and then, okay. you know, they don't, it doesn't bother you so much anymore. Okay. Um, what are some of the ways um, that you feel like this has affected your life? Um, well, a lot. Um, you know, when you obsess over something, you know, it's, it's harder to get things out of your head, so I think you take things to the extreme more, like, like normally someone gets their feelings hurt. Um, it doesn't take him as long to get over it, and I think or come to grips with it as it does me. I tend to drag it around with me for a long time afterward. Um, if it, it entered my life to a great degree last year because my phobias of enclosed spaces and developed a fear of thunderstorms. Um, you know, when spring came, thunderstorms came in, like I always felt like I had to watch the weather channel. That was kind of my compulsive behavior mm -hmm. to kind of give myself control over the situation because you don't really have control over Mother Nature, but right. at least I had control of knowing when it was going to come in so I could get someplace where I felt safe, like, you know, the inside of the library with no windows where I couldn't hear or see it, things right. like that. Um, you know, and, and doing that, it just, you know, it took away from my ministry responsibilities, job responsibilities, and you know, kind of affected my relationship with Krista because I couldn't be a good boyfriend to her because I was so worried myself about dealing with all this anxiety and stuff. Um, that was another one of my questions. Like, how do you feel like this has affected your relationships with other people, like with friends, your girlfriend, parents, ministry partners, like mm -hmm. um, that? It's always hard on Krista because it's like in a relationship you kind of mutually have to give to one another. And, like, I couldn't really give then because I was so worried myself about you know, when the next storms come in, mm -hmm. things like that, that she basically had to take care of me during that time. Mm -hmm. And, but then, you know, she had needs that needed to be met too. And she was going through hard times and problems and stuff. And I couldn't be there for her because I was so worried and scared about, you know, thunderstorms coming in all the time. I just thought, this isn't good. And I don't need to get over this. Mm -hmm. um, so it was really important there. It affected my relationship, you know, with the people I work with because sometimes they would want to go to a conference or a meeting that was important, you know, that was important. And I couldn't go because, mm -hmm. If a storm was coming in, like I'd have to say, sorry, I can't go. You know, and it, it was going to get to the point, I'm sure, where I was probably going to miss like friends' birthday parties and everything because I was too scared to drive because I was afraid the storm was going to come in. Right. Yep. Um, like, 
you said that you got to a point of this summer. Is this something, do you feel like this is something you've overcome? Or do you think this is something that's going to be a continual process for you? Well, I think it's always going to be something that's a temptation. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no cure for anxiety or, or obsessive compulsive disorder, but you can get it to the point where it's very manageable. Okay. Like, if I drop something on the ground, there's always the temptation to hesitate to pick it up. Mm -hmm. But then I just have to think, well, that's why I should do it. I'm scared. I don't want to do it. That's why I should do it. And I just have to do it. I have to not give in to the fear because the more I avoid, the harder it's going to be to pick it up in the future. Whereas I, if I don't avoid but I just do it, then it's going to get easier and easier just to do it when I have to. Okay. And that's the habit I want to get into okay. is uh, you know, not avoiding but doing. And the more, I, the more I actually do it and not avoid it, then the easier it gets. Even though the temptation, the temptation may always be there, it's still... It'll be manageable as long as I know not to give in to it. Okay. Um, like, do you feel like you have coping strategies now um, that are gonna? Well, I guess we just talked about that. Um, what, like, what are some of the things that you that you think helped you the helped you the most to to deal with this, to overcome it, to um, be able to maintain a balance now? Um, the things that helped me the most. Um, just like telling myself truth, you know, that there's not really any danger if you don't involve in a lot of these things. Um, you know, my chances of being killed in a thunderstorm or hurt are pretty minimal. Um, that, you know, if I pick something up off the ground, you know, I'm not going to die, you know, I'm probably not even going to get sick, it's probably going to be fine. Um, things like that, telling myself, are, are really helpful. Um, and just knowing that I'm sure God doesn't want me to be like this, I'm sure. You know, he wants me to have a good, victorious life. And I'm not living in victory when I'm kind of a slave to my fears and obsessions. Right. And just knowing that with his help, you know, I can overcome it and live the life I think he would want me to live. Okay. I think he's helped out a lot. Awesome. Um, like, what are some of the positive things that you think have come out of having this order and going through this? Um, positive things, I think, is... I think now I can help other people who are going through similar things because I know what it's like. I was there. I can help give suggestions to people who are going through similar things. And um, I just had a girl the other day just tell me suggestions I gave her were really helpful and that made me feel good. Um, and you know, if I can be an inspiration to people through it, that makes me feel good. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I really believe God just you know really helped me through this and kind of. I want to give him glory by showing other people that you know, if God's true with God, all things are possible. He can get you over anything that you feel like is holding you back or holding you down. Very cool. Um, like, what is there anything specific that you're doing right now? Um, like, are you still um, like I know you said you had gone to the clinic. Is there still stuff like that that you're doing? There's support groups or that kind of thing that yeah. you're currently doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a council I see once a week just to keep my skills sharp. I mean, we'll. Uh, We'll talk about what I'm having a hard time with, and then to kind of give me homework on. Okay, maybe this is what you can do. You know, make sure, make sure you do this now. Like if you're obsessing about, um, I don't know, like like not picking something up off the floor. You know, purposely drop something on the floor this week, mm -hmm. pick it up. You know, do that a couple times. You know, things like that, and then we can move on to something else that's been hard for me, and just to make sure I don't really relapse back into really being in bondage by things, but. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, can can keep uh, can keep my skills sharp in terms of not letting it get the best of me. So I do that. And there's a support group usually that meets once a month for people with anxiety and OCD that I go to, and it's really cool because <coughs> I get to share with these people the victories that I feel like the Lord's given me. You know, and sometimes I bring my friends to it with me too, and you know, they always are really curious to find out about things. And that's what I need. They made comments last time about you know, how my friends are so cool because. You know, they're really genuinely interested in, in helping out, help me, you know, to get better and stuff. And shows they really care about me, which is really cool. Good. Um, oh, can you, like, could you give me a practical example of, like, something that you struggle with, like, with OCD or with anxiety disorder that would give um, people a better idea of, like, what it would be like? Mm -hmm. Let's see, with OCD, like, oh, would be something I would do. Um, Well, like, for example, like, checking locks, like, you know, I'd lock the door, and then I'd kind of jiggle the handle, make sure it was locked, and I'd walk away sometimes, and I just would have this feeling like, well, maybe I didn't turn it enough, you know, and I just couldn't get it out of my mind, like, I felt like I had to actually go back and, you know, try to turn it again, you know, sometimes twice, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that, 
Um, sometimes I thought like, you know, certain things might be bad luck if I did them a certain way. Like, what's a good example? Uh, like if I didn't do something a certain number of times, it was bad luck. Like if I flip off a light switch, sometimes I would think maybe the light switch isn't completely off. I better check it and I kind of like tap it to make sure it was completely off. And growing up, for some reason, I always did things in fours. Okay. Counting was a big thing with people with OCD. I mean, everyone has this like magic number that they can't get peace with things until they do it that many times. For some people, it's seven, some it's five, some it's even like thirteen. You know, mm -hmm. so they have to do everything like thirteen times. Okay. You know, I'd go back to the light switch and I'd actually tap it four times. Okay. And just uh, after the fourth time, I'd say, okay, it's off. If you've ever seen the movie As Good As It Gets with Jack Nicholson, I think his magic number was five. Like, you know, he would lock his door and he would go one, two, three, four, five, you know, mm -hmm. turn on, on and off a light switch, you know, four or five times, however many times it was. And okay. it was just, yeah, certain rituals that you feel like you have to do for some reason. Okay. Very cool. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Um, just again, I think, uh, you know, I really give God credit for giving me victory through this. Like, um, I became a Christian about 10 years ago here uh, at Bowling Green, and I, uh, I just saw my life change tremendously after that in terms of, you know, I really saw God as a friend then, uh, and not just as someone who was distant from me, you know, some, I felt like he was really someone that wanted to have a relationship with me, and through accepting Jesus as my Savior, um, you know, I really feel like, you know, now, Christ's life is a part of me now, and it says, and it gives us promises in the Bible that, you know, if we're a part of Christ, then, you know, we can do anything. Like, they'll say, like, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. And uh, and I think the actual literal translation is, you know, you can move mountains. You can say from this mountain, move from here to there, and it will do it. And I used to always think, how the heck are we going to move a mountain? I just took it literally, but now I think maybe it's spoken figuratively in terms of, you know, all of us have mountains in our lives. and or as Paul said, you know, a thorn in your side, things like that. And the thing I was always confused about is I thought, well, Paul always had a thorn in his side. He had something holding him down that he asked God to take away and he wouldn't. So I always justified living with OCD and not getting help by saying, well, maybe this is just my thorn. Maybe God wants me to be like this. Mm -hmm. And someone challenged me one time with saying, well, yeah, God may allow thorns in your side. You know, he may allow trials and difficulties, but he doesn't want you to be in bondage. You know, and I knew the way I was living. I mean, I was letting the stuff control me. And anytime you're controlled by something, I knew it was bondage, and I knew God didn't want me to, to live like that. And so that was kind of a mountain in my life that okay. I just had the faith that He was going to help me to move and put my faith in action by taking the steps necessary to do it and trusting that, you know, He was going to help me through it. I think uh, it really helped me. So, and I think with anything you're going through, I think really if you put your trust in the Lord and believe that He's going to do it, I think nothing will be impossible for you. I think you can move any mountain in your life. Um, one more question real fast. How long um, have you actually struggled with those Oh or gosh. Or I can remember ever since I was a little kid doing certain rituals. You know, ever, ever since I was a little kid I think I washed my hands a lot. Um, you know, I always had this fear of ghosts and stuff and I would say these certain, they weren't prayers, they were just certain sayings, ritualistic sayings to like keep them away from me and things mm -hmm. like that. I don't even know, like, you know, growing up I never knew why I did that. But now I, I found out that that's, that's actually part of OCD. You, mm -hmm. you repeat things to yourself. Because you, if, if you don't, you feel like something bad's going to happen. Okay. Things like that. It wasn't even like I was praying to God to keep me safe. I was just like, I had mm -hmm. certain sayings I would say, and I can't remember what they were now because I was real little. But right. um, like I said, as far back as I can remember, I used to do that stuff even when I was okay. in elementary school. So yeah, it's something I've had to live with all my life. Yeah. But, you know, this is really the first time in my life I feel like I'm actually walking in victory. And, you know, it's not controlling me anymore, but I actually have power over how bad it gets or how good it gets, which is great. That's awesome. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. I feel very news reporterish. I'm not sure how to feel about that. Very what? News reporterish. Uh.